Old myths, old gods, old heroes have never died. They are only sleeping at the bottom of your mind, waiting for our call. We have need of them. They represent the wisdom of our age. Hi, um, my name's Charlie, and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about some of my paintings uh, today. Uh, unfortunately, the paintings were meant to be on show at the Guillaume Library, and also at the Candy Museum as part of the um, Right Stuff competition, supporting the Right Stuff and curated by Art for Guernsey. But because of lockdown, that hasn't been able to happen. So I thought it'd be really interesting to talk to you about the paintings and show you some of the paintings. Uh, the lighting conditions aren't that good in here, but you can still get a feel for the paintings and it might be able to give you some ideas about your writing and how you might start and continue to write a story based on the themes of myths and legends. So this is my studio. It is a rainy, cold January evening uh, and I've put some of the paintings out for you to see. There were three paintings that were meant to be displayed at the Giole Library. And there is a further painting, which fingers crossed, will be displayed at Candy Museum later in the winter or possibly early spring. And I'm going to talk to you about those and about some of the inspirations that allowed me to come up with these images. The theme which you're going to be writing your stories about for the right stuff is um, myths and legends and it's also the theme of the exhibition. Uh, in fact, the exhibition was titled, I don't know if the right pronunciation, but it was titled Los Dolores, which is myths in Guernsey French. And it's all about the importance of myths and stories in our lives. And there's a quote that I really like, which I'm going to read you, which is just down here. But I've got lots of interesting quotes. But this is one I particularly like, which I think explains why myths are so important to us, even in our modern lives. And it says, it's by D.H. Lawrence, the writer, and it says, myth is an attempt to narrate a whole human experience of which the purpose is too deep, going too deep in the blood and soul for mental explanation or description. Right, so this painting is called Young Oak Tree and it's a painting which I did last lockdown when we all had a bit more time maybe to spend outside. We had really good weather and I drew most of it on site at the top of my grandma's garden. And you'll see that it contains a young tree, a tree that actually was planted at the birth of my son Gabriel and it also contains a picture of him. And I spent a long time drawing and looking at the tree and getting to know its personality. And then I included Gabriel below it. And I was really interested in the relationship between him and the tree and the relationship between the way, not only that they look in terms of their youth and the way that they're growing, but also the atmosphere that both convey. And I'm particularly interested in Greek myths which are based around young people possibly turning into trees. There is a, a Greek myth called Daphne and Apollo, and this, is, this painting isn't based on that myth, but it is, takes ideas from it. And in, in this story, Apollo pursues this nymph, Daphne, and she to get away from him, she turns herself into a tree. And this happens a lot in Greek mythology, and I was really interested in the relationship between youth and the tree and how Gabriel was reflected in the tree and in a way to me even though he's in modern dress he's a, he's timeless and he's a little bit like kind of a young Greek hero he becomes an archetype of what it is to be young and at that stage in your life. Okay so this painting is called Atlas and as you can see it shows uh, Guernsey seawall uh, and if you follow your ride down you get down to the bottom and you see a little character at the bottom and I was really interested in the beautiful seawall it's Varzon by the way um, and I wanted to build up the kind of richness and intensity of all the all the rocks the granite that have gone in to make up the seawall and as I was painting it I started thinking about what the figure meant at the bottom and like lots of myths they kind of evolve and change as time goes by. 
Margaret Atwood said, myths can't be translated as they did in their ancient soil. We can only find our own meaning in our own time. And I think that's totally true. So I entitled this Atlas because I was thinking about this little character at the bottom and how he appeared to be holding up this great big granite wall, this great kind of wall of time. Uh, and it was kind of on his shoulders. And I thought a lot about how my son, my youngest son, um, and his generation are quite literally going to be holding up the world with all the problems with the environment and all the problems the future is going to hold. And so I was kind of reinterpreting this idea um, of Atlas for our time and a new generation. This painting is called Circe at her pool and it was painted from drawings and photographs that I took again last lockdown when we had lots of good weather and we spent a lot of time walking near the beach. I wonder if you can guess where this pool is, I won't tell you, um, but it's very beautiful and um, you can swim in it. Anyway, this image of my daughter, uh, again, it's not really a portrait of her, it's really more a portrait of an idea or an archetype of young women, women of all ages really, and all their possibilities. And when I was painting it, it made me think of Circe. Now Circe is the sort of goddess witch from Greek mythology that we hear about in the Odyssey. She is the, um, the woman goddess who uh, ensnares Odysseus and his men, turning his men into to swine and ensnaring him on, on her island. And she's always kind of been thought of in, in negative terms, perhaps until recently when a really fantastic book, um, the eponymous novel by Madeline Miller, has retold her story. And it's this retelling of myth, which I find so interesting and which inspired me to paint this image. So when you're writing your stories, and you're thinking about myths that you love and legends that you love, think about how you could retell them in a new way, in a, with a new perspective. And so all those characteristics, which might have been perceived as maybe negative about Circe, can now be reimagined and you can see her strength and all those other complexities to her character. And that's what I wanted to show in this painting. So I hope looking at the paintings has given you some ideas for your stories and made you think about how you might be able to interpret stories that you love or that speak to you in different ways. It's all about thinking of new perspectives and thinking about how that story might affect, appeal to you. Good luck. And just one last point. Remember how important stories are.